All right, uh, let's bring in Will Purdue, Comcast Sportsnet Chicago analyst for the Bulls, pre and post game, and of course had a, a long NBA career. Will, good to have you on. How are you? Well, Dan, I'm doing well, man. I appreciate you having me on. Thank you. Um, is Tim Duncan boring or private? Oh, he's definitely not boring. I can promise you that much. I'd say he's more private, and uh, I, I just think that he's not one that's entertained or he doesn't look to entertain outside of his inner circle. You were with him, what, his first two years in the league? Yes, sir. Did you know right – how long did it take before you went, oh, boy, that guy is really good? Well, I always tell the story that uh, when I first got to San Antonio, we used to always have training camp in Austin at the University of Texas. So the night before, we would all meet – jump on the bus, take the bus for the uh, hour ride down to Austin. And I remember David Robinson and I sitting on the bus talking and, and not in a bad way, but just like, Hey, I'm going to make sure young fella or young fella here earns it. We understand he's the first pick in the draft, but uh, you know, we're just, you know, as David said, we're not going to hand him anything. We're going to make him deserve it. And, you know, he comes in the first day, he's wearing his shorts backwards. He doesn't say much. Yeah, you kind of want to walk up to him and wave your hands in front of his eyes and be like, is, is anything registering in there? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, about after four practices, which back then it's two-a-days, I remember David and I were at lunch. We're like, ah, I think we're going to be okay. This guy's good. <laughs> what was he like off the court, though? <laughs> well, you know, I sent out a tweet. I mentioned it. Was, the second word I used was prankster. You know, he's a very quiet guy. But as I always said, he would be the guy, and some people go, oh, man, how immature. This has nothing to do with immaturity. <laughs> this just has to be with him kind of livening the situation. He'd be the dude that would steal your underwear, get it all wet, throw it in the freezer. He'd be the guy that would take a bag of Oreos, stick them on your car. Or in my case, you know, back then when cell phones and everything were still fairly new, he would, un unbeknownst to you, steal your cell phone, put some funky girlish ring on it, and then go behind a wall and just keep calling you so the, <laughs> the ringer would keep making that noise. And, of course, you had no idea how to turn it off. <laughs> uh, I, I had a, um, a conversation yesterday, a discussion yesterday, where, you know, Duncan's labeled the greatest power forward of all time, which Tim Duncan's one of the great players of all time. I have a little bit of a problem with the power forward designation here, Will. If you spend half your career as a center and half as a power forward, you can't be the greatest power forward of all time. <laughs> well, let's not forget, he also spent half a season playing the three spot. <laughs> okay. Remember, one year, everybody got hurt. I played the five, David played the four, and Timmy played the three. And we had the triple towers. And uh, we had some success with that. But that was just because of you know an injury to Sean Elliott. Now, when Sean came back, that wasn't the case. But I agree with you. I think he's one of the best players of all time. I think it's very difficult to just label him as the power forward because I honestly feel like when he first came in the league, he played power forward. But as he got older and the team changed, he moved into the, the center spot. And I would say he might have played more center than he did power forward, meaning he played more with his career with his back to the basket mm -hmm. than actually facing, facing the basket. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.